everybody, this is Joe Workman, and today we're going to look at the amazing Foundation 1.3 update. Now, there's one thing, if I could choose one word to sum up this update, it is speed, right? I mean, if you look at the foundation sites that are using 1.3 and see how fast they download, you're, you will just be blown away. I mean, the, the small little tweaks that I made, I, I worked on days on optimizing um, some of the downloads of the foundation assets, and I am really blown away at, at the performance. It really is two, three, four times faster um, than the previous version. And the previous version was already fast. So this means foundation sites for 1.3 are just blazing fast. And I am really, really excited about it. I can't wait to see all the, the really fast websites that come from it. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna choose five things to look at in this update. I'm not gonna go over every single thing, okay? We're gonna look at five things um, that I think are kind of the, the most impactful settings and changes and features that are inside this uh, 1.3 update. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, before we jump into some features, let's go ahead and show you where you can find out where all the change notes are for everything that changed in Foundation 1.3. Now, you probably already know that on my doc portal, I have a foundation document portal. And if you scroll down to the stack settings and release notes, you'll see that there is three sections here for the starter pack, the add-ons pack one, and the add-ons pack two. And if you were to open up each individual section, you'll see that there's a release notes for each pack. So if we click on this one, we'll see that this has the release notes for our starter pack. So I hope that you're leveraging this doc portal because it's a fabulous resource to really learn about all the settings and some FAQs and really get the, the full power of Foundation and all of my stacks. So the first thing that I mentioned about Foundation 1.3 is that it's just blazing fast, right? Now, here I have a Safari window and I've disabled browser caching in it. So if we were to flip through the Foundation site, we'll notice that these web pages are downloading pretty much instantly, uh, right? I mean, they're just blazing fast. Um, I, I'm very, very happy with the performance. And, uh, you know, if I were to enable browser caching, that means these web pages are going to download even faster. So it's really amazing how fast our sites can download with this single foundation update. Now, another thing that we've done here is inside the theme, we've updated foundation to the latest version of the Zurb foundation framework. So we're currently now running Foundation Framework version 5.5.1, right? So just to let you know, we got a ton of bug fixes um, by upgrading that, right? That's one of the powers of leveraging a great open source framework such as Foundation because the open source community really contributes new features and bug fixes uh, to the underlying framework that we get to capitalize on. So the first new feature that I want to talk about is in site styles. And it is inside the foundation text group. And we'll notice that there is a new site language setting. And there are over 100 different languages that you can define here. So if your site is in English, which is obviously the default, you can do that. If your site is in German, go ahead and set German. And what this, do this does is it actually sets the language inside the web page header to be that language. This is a great internationalization feature that uh, is really a, a differentiator now uh, with Foundation. Now, while we're inside site styles, uh, we'll notice that there are a bunch of new Foundation text features, okay? And a lot of them are hidden by default, but the first one we'll notice here is that there's now a style italic option for your H1 font, H2 fonts, okay? So you can actually have italic headers now, which is really great. Now, where we get a lot more power user features is if we go ahead and go, um, if we select custom definition, we'll notice now that we have a few new options here, okay? First, we'll notice that there's a font fallback, okay? And what this is important is, let's say we were loading a Google font. So in this case, Open Sans, I wanna check load Google font. Now, let's say something happens and that font wasn't able to be loaded. What the font fallback does is it provides a fallback font family for our sites to use in the case the external font isn't loaded properly. So what this does is we have all the generic font families here uh, that are 
basically every single font in the world is based off one of these generic font families. Most are going to be sans serif, but you have cursive fonts and monospace fonts and whatnot, right? So it's great to choose a font fallback um, if you're loading a custom font. Next, we'll notice that we have the ability to add additional weights to load. Now, this is only if you're loading via Google. So how do we use this? Basically, here I, I set the font weight to 300. But let's say I want the option to also maybe load um, a 600 and 700 font weight for this particular font. Because maybe I want to do a custom header um, later on inside the header stack or something of that nature, right? So all we need to do is type in our numbers that we want. So if we want um, 500 and 700, we would load 500 comma 700 and it will load those for you. Now, if you want to load an italic version of that weight, you would then do, let's say we wanted 700 italic, we would do 700 italic, okay? No spaces, make sure it's all one word. And this is uh, basically the syntax that Google requires. So um, this is how you would define all of those various font weights. And just to show you, here we are in a header stack. So let's say I, I define my style as custom, okay? And then I could go down here and then I could define a custom font weight, right? Now, if I were to choose 700, I know it would work because I told site styles to also load the 700 font weight for my header. Now, the next new feature that I wanna point out is with images. Have you ever gone to a website and you know, as the website's loading, you see the content basically growing and moving down the page as the images are actually being downloaded onto the web page. Now, what if we had the ability to have our image reserve its space and then fill that space once the image is downloaded? This is basically what's called a reflow effect. And as images download, your content that is below it moves down the page. So what we've added in the image uh, stack to help this is a new preload option. Now, I would love to have turned this on by default. However, I didn't want to break any existing stacks. Because when you check the new preload option, you actually have to put it in the actual image width and height. Okay, And what this does is it will now reserve the space where that image is going to be located for the image. This will give us much nicer and a lot more elegant page loads. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is off canvas. And off canvas, we put a lot of work into it in this update. We fixed a lot of bugs and really made it a lot more reliable across all devices. And probably one of the biggest requested features was the ability to actually have a different color scheme for the menu than we have for the menu bar, right? So as you see now, I have a white text on a dark purple background where my title bar is purple text on a gray background, right? So we can now style those differently. Now, the last feature that I wanna review here is inside the foundation one column stack. And as users have become more advanced and they start using stacks like our Jack stack and things of that nature, they've really started to realize the power of responsive padding. So what we've done in the one column foundation stack is we've allowed you to have detailed padding now instead of just having top and bottom padding. So if you were to check the detailed padding, you'll notice now that we have the ability to define a unit so we can have percentage or rem padding Okay, they're both responsive units. And then you can define the padding for the top, bottom, left, and right, all individually. So this will really give you a lot of flexibility in terms of laying your content out and uh, you know define padding and whatnot. So, but I think it's very powerful because um, a one column stack will, is a lot you know less weight than something like adding a jack or other stacks to the page, right? So this is a really powerful thing because it's a feature that a lot of users use and now we've added it to the most basic of stacks so that we can really group our things together and add the responsive padding that we want to them. So that wraps it up, everyone. That is our Foundation 1.3 update. Now, again, there's a lot more 
um, you know, things that were changed, bugs that were fixes, new features that were added, new settings, right? So there's a lot happening in this update, but we just went over the top five, what I thought were the top five things. And I really hope you enjoy this update and I, I hope you love the speed, right? I worked really hard on the speed and I'm really proud of it. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, using our products and loving them. And uh, thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.